Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting autumn window and I'm going to be sipping on my coffee and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, fire red, and green oxide. And of course you could switch up those colors too if you like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number four round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you could switch those up as well if you'd like to. And if you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be drawing an outline of our hills. I'm going to be using my pencil and I'm just going to give you a couple of markers. We'll connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll have a series of rolling hills. But please know that this is just an imaginary place. Yours does not have to look exactly like mine. We're just doing this in an intuitive way to try and get it to look for me, similar to where I am from, which is we have lots of hills in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. <laughs> so I'm gonna come up or down about halfway on my right hand side and make myself a little bit of a marker. Then I'm gonna come down to the bottom and come up maybe about two and a half to three inches, make myself another marker on that area. On the left hand side, I'm gonna kind of visually pick where the halfway spot is between the top and the bottom of my canvas. I'm going to go about two inches above that, make myself a mark, about two inches below that, make myself a mark, and then I'm going to come down maybe about another inch and a half, inch, inch and a half, and make a third mark. So three marks on the left, two marks on the right. Now I'm going to connect my bottom two with a really sketchily kind of roly-poly type of hill. You can certainly, like I said, create yours in whatever formation that you would like to. I am just going to give mine some hills that are, again, representational to kind of where, where I'm from. So then the next two I'm going to match is this one here to this one up here. So I'm just going to give this one a gentle kind of rolling down. And I don't want mine to be too, too straight, which is why I give them that little bit of a rolling um, kind of curve to them. And then this last one, I'm going to meet this about three or four inches inside this hill. So I'm going to come right about to here and make this into my final hill back in through here. And then we're going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your roly-poly hills on here, you can certainly adjust them whatever way you'd like to. And then you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our sky. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are brown, white, and yellow. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have my sun in this area in through here, maybe a little bit to the right of the center. And it's gonna be really big and huge. And then as it gets towards the 
outside or towards the top of my canvas, I'm gonna have it darker and darker. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with white paint on my brush and I'm going to put a big, huge area where I want my sun to go. So I'm just using white paint to start. I've got it really, this super duper large area in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, as I'm transi transitioning towards the outer area of the canvas, I'm gonna start to pick up a little bit of brown. We're gonna put the glow around the sun in a few minutes, but what I'm gonna first do is get the, the background of the sky on. So my, my um, footprint of that bright area is pretty darn large. Without washing my brush, I'm picking up a little bit of brown paint. And this is where I'm going to start to get that darker area up in the top of the sky, picking up a little bit of white as well, so I can get these two to blend in well with each other. You can certainly have your sky lighter or darker than mine. I'm just going for it to, to be a little bit darker at the top, so it looks, it provides us with a great way for our sun to be illuminating the sky. I don't want this to the brown to go too far into my footprint of the sun, but I do want it to blend in with it. So that's why I'm kind of overlapping it a little bit as I'm going through this process. I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the right side where I've got brown and white on my brush to get this upper area of the sky to, to get darker than where we have that sun area. And I'm gonna bring this all the way down to the right hand side, maybe a little bit more with white on my brush. And again, I want these areas to talk to one another. So I am overlapping this light area with this tan type of color that I have created on the canvas with the brown and the white on my brush at the same time. And what this is doing is it's providing us with some nice atmospheric dimension for our sky. And again, you could get yours to go as light or as dark as you want, but once you've got it on there, now what I'm gonna do is I, if you have a lot of brown on your brush right now, I would recommend washing and drying it, or you can just kind of wipe it off on your paper towel. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of yellow paint, just a teeny tiny bit of yellow paint, and I'm gonna put my glow in place. So. I've got my bright, bright white area, then I'm gonna have my glow for my sun, and then it'll be even a little bit lighter past that. So I'm not bringing this yellow all the way to the edge. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit from that bright edge, and then what that's gonna do is it's gonna tell the viewer that the sun is illuminating the sky as well. So you could certainly get this to be as dominant as bright as you want that yellow to be. I'm really just using a soft um, brush stroke to get it on here. My white below is still a little wet. So if yours is not wet and it's not blending well for you, you can certainly add a little bit more white into the equation and you can just kind of keep that circular type of shape on the sun itself and of course you can modify this and make it brighter or darker or however more intense you want it. But we are going to be utilizing this large brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful sky all nice and created here, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our grassy hills. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are white, yellow, green, brown, and black. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be having this center area and the top of the hills in this center area, the lightest, and then the hills, each hill will get darker and darker as it gets down to the bottom of the hill and as it recedes away from the sun. So when also it will get darker, the, a darker progression down to this bottom hill. So this bottom hill is gonna be the darkest and then it'll get lighter and lighter as it goes towards the sun and lighter and lighter as it goes towards the center of each hill. So I'm gonna start with this back hill the back hill I'm gonna be using brown, green, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna start with brown and green on my brush. I am not using a lot of paint in this process because I don't want to kind of muddle my colors. I wanna be able to kind of change them on the fly. 
I'm using a thin bodied student grade paint. If you're using a thicker bodied or a more heavier bodied paint, you may want to use a little bit more paint on your brush than I am to keep it a little bit fluid, um, but I wouldn't overdo it because you might end up um, blending a little bit too much. I want my hills to be darker at the bottom, so I'm using the green and the brown at the bottom of the hill, so maybe somewhere in through here and over to the left hand side of this hill because this is the farthest away from the sun. And then once I've got that darkness on there, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of green and yellow, not washing my brush. And this is going to get my hill to start to be lighter and lighter as it's going towards the top of the hill. And again, I'm not using a lot of paint. I wanna make sure that I can control the colors. And if you have too, too much paint on your brush, then what'll happen is you may, you may just over blend and it all becomes one color on you. So I'm reserving kind of the right side of this hill as well as this part in through here to be my brightest. So right now I'm picking up yellow and white without washing my brush. So this is where I'm gonna to start to transition into the lightness at the top of the hill and in through this area as it's reaching the sun area. Without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up a teeny bit of white paint to get this area right in front of that sun to be the lightest. Before I proceed onto the next hill, I will wash and dry my brush because right now I have white paint on my brush. And if I was to go from white to my darkness down here, it would turn very gray. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna start with the next hill. The next hill, I'm gonna start introducing black at the bottom. So I've got black, and just to, so you can see how little I'm using, I'm just using a tiny bit of black, some brown, and some green. That's gonna be my colors that I'm gonna start at the bottom of this particular hill. And I'm gonna go pretty darn dark in through here. I want this hill to look different than that when they, when they touch, and I also want this hill to look a little bit even darker than that one um, as it's receding past or farther away from the sun. So I'm gonna use the, the remnants of this darkness on my brush just to kind of get the um, little, little valley in between there. Now I'm gonna pick up some green and brown to just kind of get these, these edges kind of coming towards that center of the, of the hill. And again, I'm not using a lot of paint, so you might hear my brush almost like scrubbing at times or using you know a stumbling type of um, technique to get this paint on here you might find that you may want to do more than one layer to get it to look softer or have more texture to that grass but i right now am just going for a really soft rolling hill kind of look to it i don't really want it to look like there's long grass but you might want yours to have long wild grass you can really dictate how this looks you know for for your own visual pleasure and then as i'm reaching the top of these hills you can see i'm kind of um reserving the the yellows and the green or the yellow and the white for that interior area as it's going towards the sun so now i'm going to start picking up yellow to get this um, to start to blend and intermingle and give me that um, initial kind of glow that's going to happen from from the sun and in a minute i will start picking up some yellow and white to get that in that most inside area, the, the lightest. I wanna just kind of elevate the top of this little hill a bit. So a little bit more yellow. I might add a little white onto that too. And now that I've got this area in through here, I'm gonna start picking up yellow plus white on my brush to get this interior area the lightest. And I'm bringing it all the way up to my pencil mark. And if you find that you want your pencil or your pencil is, um, showing too much, your pencil mark is showing too much, you might want to do a second layer or just let it dry or use a little bit more paint on your brush when it comes to adding it right in that vicinity where that pencil is. And then I am going to be washing my brush before I do that, that next hill. And this is one of those steps too, as it dries, you might find that you want to elevate um, you know, the intensity of the highlight or the yellow. So feel free to keep adding to it as it as it's drying as well. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. 
and I'm going to proceed to this bottom hill. And this bottom hill is going to be the darkest. So I'm going, I'm going to start with my black, green, and brown. But I'm using more black on my brush to start because I know how overpowering that black can be. And if I use a little bit more, I'll be able to get a little bit more of a dark intensity down at the bottom of this hill. So black, green, and brown is where I started. And as I work my way up this hill, I will add a more green as I'm getting towards the top. So black, brown, and green is where I started at the bottom. Now I'm picking up some green and brown as I'm getting towards the top of this hill. And you do want to, if you want this to really resemble different hills, the trick is to get the area um, next to the, the hill that's behind it to look a little bit different, to have a little bit different of a color to it. So you may to, to have that contrast so you can see the difference between the hills. So you may at times find that you've got to add a little bit more green or a little bit more lightness or a little bit more darkness in order to be able to see the difference between those two hills. So that's one of those things that um, if you're going through this process, and right now I'm just picking up green for the record, um, as you're going through this process, if you're having trouble getting those hills to look different from one another, that's probably why, because you you're, don't have enough contrast between the two hills as they're meeting one another. So as I've, I've got this bottom area done, I'm gonna start picking up some yellow on my brush without washing it. So this yellow is gonna start to um, intermingle with my green and get myself this lighter area as it's going up towards the tippy top of this hill. And then once you've got your hills all nice and executed, and again, you can have yours as light or as dark as you want. If you can get this center area to be the lightest, I'm picking up a little bit of yellow and white right now. If you can get this center area where the sun is showing its face to be the lightest, that's what's going to really tell the story of that sun being bright because it's going to give you the, um, it's, um, you know, it's powerful light upon these hills. And then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your hills done, you can wash and dry your big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer for our trees and our bushes. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I do wanna forewarn you though that before you start this step that you wanna make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry or you can do as I did and just whip out your blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using a lot of like a stippling or dotting type of technique to get these bushes and trees to have a nice silhouette to them. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using brown and black paint. And for me, I like to start a step like this, especially when I have a bright light source because when the light source is low, a lot of these bushes and trees may end up looking like they're in the silhouette. So they'll have a lot of darkness to them. So I'm gonna use that as my base color and then I'll add the bright foliage to them later. So we'll have some great contrast and a lot of vibrance to, vibrancy, but still keeping them a little bit on the darker side. I'm gonna start um, with a whole line of trees at, in the distance along this hill. I'll have a batch of bushes and little bushes in through here. I'll have a big tree coming up the side here and kind of overhanging um, a good portion of the canvas. And then I'll have a little batch of bushes down in through here. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of black paint and a little bit of brown paint on my brush. I do not need a lot of paint for this step. What I'm gonna first do, I don't wanna just start dotting right along this edge here because I want that edge to look like it, it like the hill kind of goes over and the trees are almost on the other side of it. So if I was to dot it, I would have a, a fringe kind of edge to it as it's meeting the hill and I don't really want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and move it left to right right along the edge of the hill in through here, almost providing myself with a little bit of a line, but I don't necessarily need it to be a thick line. 
I just really want it so I don't have the those stippling dots at the um, at the area where it's meeting my hill. So I'm really just kind of giving it a loose, sketchily kind of left to right brush stroke in through here, getting it to go all the way to the edge. And then once I've done that, now I can start to create my little bushes or my trees. So this is where I'm going to sit here and I'm going to dot up. I'm going to make sure that I, that line that I've created doesn't in essence look like a line. And if you do get it in your grass like I just did, that's okay. You can you can paint it out later if you want to. Where um, where it meets my sun, I'm keeping these pretty low. I'll give a cup, you know, maybe one or two that's a little bit higher, but I'm going to have my more exciting foliage and trees and stuff farther away from my um, sun area. And again, I'm just using a little bit of brown and black to provide me with this base coat for um, for these trees. I'm trying to keep them very um, carefree and not a lot of height or detail in this back area, especially around that sun. And then when I come over here to this left hand side, this is where I might add a little bit more excitement, make them a little bit bigger. I'll probably think I'm going to have a couple of taller ones over here on the left hand side. But I am concentrating on, you know, kind of eliminating that line down at the bottom. So I'm just making sure I dot over it. If I get into my grass a little bit, I'm okay with that. I'm going to have a couple of tall, slender ones coming in through here. But you can see I'm really not doing a lot of detail. I just am looking to get some sort of darker base for these trees that I'm gonna have. So they have some good contrast and they have some good dimensional elements to them as I build the fall foliage on top of them. And then once you've got that on there, we, I'm going to go ahead and do a little batch of them down in through here. So again, black and brown. I'm going to do my kind of outline the bottom where it's meeting that particular hill. I'm going to decide how far over I want this to go. I think I'm going to have it go right about to here. And then maybe I'm going to just start dotting up, giving myself this little uneven top to it. This might end up looking more like a couple of low-lying bushes that might look like trees whatever you imagine them to be is totally fine and then I'm going to do another little set of bush over here so again just kind of outlining where it meets that hill to give me that um, that soft entry or to make it look like it's kind of going on the other side of the hill and then I'm going to just kind of start dotting up. I know that this is going to be at the base of a tree, so I'm not going to put this too, too high. Maybe just a couple of inches in through there. And then my tree, I'm going to go along this right-hand side, and I'm going to bring it up into um, kind of canopying over part of, my, part of my canvas. So on this right-hand side, I'm going to come in maybe about an inch and a half. I'm using my bristle brush to create the trunk of it. You could certainly use a different brush if you wanted yours to have more detail, but I just brought it a little bit more narrow as it came towards the edge of my canvas in through there. And again, just black and brown is where I'm headed here. I'm going to bring one of these um, branches out in through here. And I'm not really concerned about it looking totally like a branch because I'm going to be hiding it with a whole bunch of <laughs> leaves in a second. I just kind of wanted to give myself some stability and understanding of where I wanted these to be. I'm going to go ahead and dot this out something like this. Again, I'm just using my, my brown and black right now to give me the illusion or the um, undercoat for the leaves that we're going to be putting on in a little while. And then this one I think I'm going to have, if this is about halfway into my canvas. Let's see here. Yeah, this is about half. I'm going a little bit to the right of that is about as far over as I'm bringing my tree, but you could certainly bring your tree over farther if you wanted to. And the dots, I'm leaving them very um, kind of flaky along the edges. You don't have to dot this 100%. Again, this is just providing us with that um, shadowed kind of undercoat for the leaves that we're going to have later but it gives us a good shape to that tree as well. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, 
you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the leaves on all of our trees and we'll finish up this trunk. I will be using my large bristle brush and I do recommend again that you have um, wherever you just did the the trees and the bushes and stuff that you dry those or that they are dry by the time you start this step. So I'm going to be using predominantly green, red, yellow, and white, but I may find that I want to go back into the black or the brown at some point, and if I do, I will let you know. As I do this, I'm going to build my leaves and my foliage from the dark to the light. So I'm not going to be using white or yellow and white until I feel like a lot of my leaves are already in place and I can then add that brightness to it. When I think of foliage or autumn leaves, I do see a lot of green in them. I know the the mind tells us that autumn leaves are red and yellow and orange, but they all start green. So I, when I'm building my, full, my autumn scenes, a lot of times I will be using green as well. So that's where I'm gonna start. I've got my large brush, I've got green paint on my brush, and when I do this, I'm not gonna litter all of my leaves with green. I'm just gonna kind of pick some designated spots and use that as a, as a base coat for that particular um, structure. So I'm gonna do these two in through here. I'm adding a little bit of green to them and I'm gonna be using this dotting type of technique throughout this entire um, process. But when I do it, I'm not gonna overdo it. So I'm never gonna have a ton of paint on my brush. I think I'm gonna have a little bit over here. I love to layer my leaves as well. So even if I'm putting green on them now, I will, I will probably put another color. Like these ones will probably get some yellow leaves as well. So by building them, it really makes them look a little bit more natural. I will also, to get the edges to be brighter, I will be bringing out my leaves past the original um, area that we designated. So because my background is lighter than that, if I have the paint on the lighter or the whiter background, it will make it brighter around those edges. I'm not gonna paint everything green, but again, I am adding green to quite a bit of my, um, of my foliage. I'm gonna go down into this little bush in through here. Not gonna add a lot. I feel like I actually have too much paint on my brush, so just gonna tap it off. And when I do this, I try not to be consistent through the whole thing. So I'll leave some dark areas, I'll put some light areas, and I want it to look like there's a lot of dimension in it so I don't overdo um, anything when I'm doing the, this, these foliage type of steps. So on this tree up here, I'm gonna put a lot of green up through this top region because I know it, the green will get a lot darker on top of um, this brown and this is gonna provide me some nice shadowy and shaded kind of area throughout this tree. So adding a good amount up through the top and I don't want the green to be necessarily the dominant color on this particular tree so I'm not gonna bring it past these edges. And now that I've got my green on there, I'm actually gonna wash and dry my brush so because I'm gonna go into red and I want um, that red to be pretty um, red. <laughs> so if you have green and red on your brush, it might end up looking a little brown, but that's all right. We're gonna be adding additional layers anyways. And I want a lot of red in my, in my scenery, so I'm gonna make sure that I really have that red speaking pretty loudly, but again, you don't have to do the entire, um, the entire painting with red. I suppose if you wanted to, you certainly could, but I am definitely being, um, you know, a little reserved when it comes to adding it, because I know it's a powerful color, especially if I go past those edges a little bit of the original footprint of that particular um, bush. As I come in through here, if you want it to look like you have something in front of another um, area, like right here I did red in front of green, you can do that and what's gonna happen is gonna look like there's a bush or another tree sitting in front of 
that the tree that's behind it. So you can add those dimensional elements by allowing one tree to sit in front of the other or have a little low-lying bush or something along that, that realm. And again, we're gonna add more leaves to these so they look more three-dimensional, but right now I'm just getting on those, um, the base color for them. So again, I'm, and you can overlap, that red can overlap into the green a little bit and the green can certainly um, work underneath, but you know, leaving some dark spots totally works. I'm gonna go ahead and move over to this right one over here. And again, I'm going past in some areas my original footprint and I'm trying to give it a little bit of um, you know unique shape to it so or or in an organic kind of shape so it doesn't look you know just um, flat or like the landscaper came in and just kind of clipped it before we took a picture of it so you can certainly have fun with that um, giving it a nice unique shape I'm going to go ahead and add a bunch of red up into this tree and of course again I am pulling it down past where my original footprint was this tree I want a lot of red in it so I am going to overlap some of this red um, into the green that we had uh, originally put in through there. But again, I don't need to do 100%. I just really want to get these um, these red leaves to, uh, you know, show up and have a lot of intensity, but I don't need to cover up all of that darkness that I had underneath. I do know it will get darker as it dries simply because we have that dark base, but as I'm, as I'm building this, I don't need to do it 100%. Now that I've got my red on there, I'm actually going to kind of make myself a little bit of an orangey kind of color. So I have red on my brush. I'm going to pre-mix it with a little bit of my yellow so I can get a, a nice orange color. And then I'm going to dot in a little bit of orange. I'm not going to go crazy with the orange, but just maybe a little bit here and a little bit there. And I want my, my yellow is going to be very vibrant in a minute, but I like to kind of put in a couple of pops of the orange as well, just so we can really make it feel like it's a nice autumn scene. And of course you can see that I am not overdoing it, just kind of adding little little spots here and there. So it gives us that authentic autumn feel with the oranges and the reds. And you know, you can certainly, maybe you want yours to be all yellow. You can really steer this in whatever direction you want. The orange also can act as a great highlight for some of the red. So if you feel like, you know, your red's not popping enough, you can certainly use that orange as a bit of a highlight in certain areas. And again, I have not picked up white yet. So we're just going on the, the base colors to um, provide us with some of this um, vibrancy. I am now going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up some yellow and then I'm gonna go into my yellow and white and then white. So wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up some of my yellow. And again, my yellow is gonna be very translucent. Um, it will be more powerful when I start to use the white with it. I think I have a little bit too much paint on my brush right now, um, but I do want it to have that authentic yellow kind of feel to it. So before I start using white, I am just going to be using yellow and adding that into some of my areas in through here and definitely getting it to overlap into that vibrant sky that sits next to some of these trees, especially where my sun is. That's going to be these, these um, pieces of foliage should in essence be um, the brightest out of everywhere because they're sitting the closest to the sun, but you could certainly, again, feel free to manipulate yours as much as you want. Gonna get the right side of these trees to have a little bit more brightness with the yellow on them. And then I'm gonna put a little bit down and through here. And in a second, I'm gonna pick up my white. But right now, just kind of adding this yellow here and there, not overdoing it, because I, I, I like it to not be too, um, everything has every color so this is this is where when i start to add the the yellow and the you know and the oranges and stuff i just really consciously try not to put it everywhere so maybe maybe i do have a yellow tree but 
when it comes to putting some of this yellow intermingled with the red, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily do it everywhere. Just it, little bits and pieces to give it that extra bit of, um, of dimension to it. Now I'm going to start picking up a little bit of white. Not a lot, but enough where I can kind of control some of these, um, these highlights along the edge. And I actually, I see and I feel that I've got some red on my brush. So I'm actually washing my brush because I want, I want some nice brightness there. So that red will tend to dull it down. So I just washed and dried my brush. I'm picking up some white paint. So what you can do with the white, it's a powerful little color in your in your arsenal if you want stuff to be brighter what you can do is you can add a little bit of white let it dry for a second and then you can come on top of that white with the red and because the white is underneath it the red will be more vibrant so that's a little kind of on the fly trick if you did want, you know you're going through this and you're like oh I like it but my my leaves aren't bright enough or they're not as yellow as I want them or they're not as orange as I want them it could be because you have a dark under undercoat it could be because you're working with a paint that is a little on the translucent side it could be a number of things but if you want it to be brighter you can always do and I'll show you how this trick works in a second. I'm letting it dry while I'm adding my lightness to the others, but you can add these little speckles of white and then come back on top of them with that vibrant color that you want to appear and with the white base underneath it, they will look more, they'll look brighter. So I'm adding some extra highlight to the right side of these tall trees in through here because I feel that they would be catching some of that sunlight. And right now I just have white paint on my brush. I don't really want to do much in through here because those are kind of in the shadow, maybe a little bit on the edge of these guys in through here. Again, right now, just using the, the tip of my brush, a little bit of white paint. I'm gonna add yellow on top of these in a minute, but right now, just kind of giving them that bit of um, white sparkle that's gonna help make them even brighter. So again, same thing with the tips of these guys, just a little bit of white paint. And I'm running into some wet other paint, which is totally fine for me. Um, because it's making it all kind of look like it belongs together. On this tree, the far side is the side that would be the, the brightest, which is why I'm putting a lot of lightness on the edges, which tells the viewer that the light is coming from the other side of it, which it in fact is. So that's another little, a little trick in through there. And I already added a little bit of white here. What you can do now is just wipe your brush off on your paper towel, pick up a tiny bit of yellow if you wanted that yellow to pop even more and putting it right on top of that white is going to make it really illuminate you could you know put more red on top of this white and that red would be even brighter so feel free to you know experiment with that and i'm going to put a little bit maybe maybe a little bit of red and yellow in through here. And then I just gotta hit that tree trunk. I'm not gonna do much for my tree trunk. I'm really just gonna kind of, I've got a dirty brush right now. I'm just gonna wipe it off on my paper towel, give myself a little bit of a highlight over on the left hand side with my dirty brush. And you could certainly bring it up if you wanted there to appear to be some trunks. You could certainly use a smaller brush too to do this if you feel that um, the bristle brush is a bit too much. You could certainly um, use a smaller brush. And then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your beautiful bushes and foliage in, give it a minute, let it dry, see if you want to add anything additional to it. And once it's all set and done, I kept a lot of the white in through here again because that sun is poking through. Um, but Feel free to tweak yours as much as you want, and then we're gonna utilize our uh, medium brush for the next step, so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our window frames. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are brown and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna give myself a couple of markers, and then I will connect those markers and 
we'll magically have a <laughs> frame when we're done. So I'm having my windows kind of swinging out from um, the edge of the canvas. Of course, we're not gonna see the far edge of the windows, which will make our painting job much easier. But when I um, swing them out, they're gonna, the window will be pretty wide at the edge of my canvas and get a little bit more narrow as it comes in to the center of my canvas. So I'm gonna make myself a couple of markers. I'm gonna use just white paint to um, create these markers so you guys can see them. So first things first, I'm gonna make four dots in the corners, one in each corner of the canvas, and I'm just using white paint. And then the next markers I'm gonna do are the top and the bottom of the, um, the, the exterior part of the window. So I'm having my window come in, I would say about seven inches and about two and a half inches from the top. Oh, actually, you're not gonna be able to see that because it's light on light. I just put black on my brush so you can see that marker. Um, whatever you do on one corner, you're gonna wanna do that on all four corners. So I came in about seven inches and down about two and a half. You could use a ruler to get that measurement or you could do it by sight, and but once you've got where you have that marker, you can use anything else as a measuring tool to create that same distance in the subsequent areas. So mine is, I can use, this is the other brush I'm gonna be using today. I can, you know, just kind of say, okay, it is about, oh, that's, that's ironic. It's exactly to my bristles right there. So I could come down about two and a half inches up from the bottom of my canvas and make myself another marker, which I've magically already done, but somewhere about there, which is gonna be the same distance away from the edge of my canvas as that one. And then I repeat that step. So I already know my distance is about seven inches and I'm up about two and a half inches. So I could use my, my um, brush, give myself a little bit of a marker here, and then do the same thing at the top. And you could just come to the left of this. You don't have to measure again that way but you wanna come in about the same distance. So once I've got myself my four dots here and my four dots on the edge of my canvas, I just need to connect them. So I'm gonna load my brush with white and brown at the same time. I'm not pre-mixing a color because I want this frame to have a variety of shades in it. So by using two colors on my brush at the same time, it will provide me with that almost like a wood type look to it. So I want my frame to look more narrow as it's farther away from us and bigger as it's close to us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect this corner to this corner or this dot to this corner. When I draw my line, I'm going to push my brush harder into my canvas. So I'm gonna start pretty narrow here. And then as I come towards this corner here, I'm going to push my brush wider and wider and wider. So what happens is I will naturally get a line that is progressively wider as it gets towards the exterior or the far side, the outside of that frame. So I'm gonna do that to all of them. And I'm not using, again, a ruler or anything like that. So I'm just kind of going with my sight. But when I go to do these straighter lines, I'm always keeping my eye on the prize, which is the other dot. So when I go from here to here, I'm constantly watching this dot over here, which helps to guide my brush into it in a straighter kind of line. And I also rest my hand on my canvas sometimes, so that will also help to um, stabilize my hand. And they're not gonna come out perfect, uh, potentially, on that first shot, so you can certainly go back over them if you want to. I think I just extended that one a little bit far, but that's okay. And you can see how part of it's dark, part of it's a little bit light, and that's my intent. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here, starting at this dot and go into there, starting with not a lot of pressure, and then as I work my way towards the um, exterior corner of my canvas, I push my brush harder. And that's going to allow my line to get wider and wider. I'm gonna repeat down in this bottom corner in through here. So not pressing hard in through this, this uh, marker here. And then as I get towards that corner, I'm pushing my brush firmer and firmer. My, my easel is getting in my way. So I'm gonna move my canvas like that and then just push it harder and harder and harder. And again, these lines don't have to be 
super duper straight. We're not going for photorealism here. We're just going for an interpretive type of uh, painting that gives us some good, some good story to tell. And now I'm going to connect to this dot to this dot. So this is all going to be the same width and it's the far, far away. So I don't need to press my brush very hard. And I'm keeping my eye on the prize, which is my other marker. So I'm just going to start right here, keep my eye on my prize, which is my other marker, and just kind of travel down like that. And again, you can certainly use a ruler if that makes you more comfortable, or you can mask off the area with tape, whatever works for you. I'm going for an old country window that ha might have a lot of weathering to it. So if mine is a little a little rickety and crooked, I'm totally okay with that. But that's, that's the story of my life. I, I don't need things to be perfect in my world. And then they're, they're, they're perfectly not perfect for me. <laughs> and then uh, once I've got this line in through here, now I just want to put a couple of um, additional frame pieces on the in interior of it. So I'm going to cut these sections in about three. So this is about five and a half, five and a half, and five and a half. I'm going to make myself a little bit of a marker here, but I want you to be able to see it. So I'm just adding a little bit more white paint. And same thing on the other side. So of course you could use your brush as a ruler to see how high you did it on one side and then just do it conversely the same height on the other side. Of course it doesn't have to be perfect science here but something close will be great. And then when you go to make the markers here you just travel to the left from here and up about a half of an inch. It doesn't from the bottom ones and then we'll go down on the other ones. So I'm traveling over from here and then just up a little tiny bit, make myself a mark. And then when I go to do this one, I travel over and down just a little tiny bit. So not much over and then down just a little tiny bit. And then I can just go straight across to here and make myself a mark here, straight across from here, make myself a mark here, and then I'm just gonna connect them. So when I go to connect them, again, I'm not gonna push hard here, but I'll push hard as I um, reaching this edge over here, which will make my line more narrow at the far end and more wide as it comes closer to me. So again, I'm still just using white and brown as my colors. I'm keeping my eye on the prize, which is my marker over here on the left-hand side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this one, keeping my eye on the prize, which is the marker on the left-hand side, pushing my brush really hard as I come towards the line, towards the edge of my canvas, which gives you that bit of um, perspective without even trying very hard at it. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing over here, not pushing hard here, watching my, my um, place where I'm headed, which is over here, pushing really hard as I get to that exterior part. Don't push hard here. And then as you go on towards that other marker, push harder, harder, harder and your line will get wider, wider, and wider. And then all you need to do is one more marker, which is gonna be, or one more line, which is gonna be down the center. So again, just kind of eyeball your halfway point from here to here. So I'm gonna say it's about here. Make myself a little bit of a marker, and I'm gonna use anything I want for a measuring tool, because I wanna get this to be of a similar distance at the top, at the bottom, which is going to be right about here and then over on this side right about here and over on this side right about here and again these are just vertical lines so I don't need them to get wider as they um, come towards me because it's just a vertical line but I do want it a little bit wider than that one if possible if not possible no worries and then I'm just going to go straight from here keeping my eye on the prize which is the next marker in through here and of course you can certainly just fiddle with it a little bit to get it as straight as you want it but don't worry about it being perfect and then I'll go ahead and do that on the other side so brown and white on my brush keeping my eye on the prize which is the other marker and just kind of traveling my brush down to hit that and then making it as wide 
as I want it. And then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your window frames all nice and constructed, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the shadows on our window frames. So I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. But for me, um, I'm gonna wanna have some kind of clean, fluid lines that go pretty far. So what I like to do is, you could use liquid medium to thin out your paint or water. I like to just put a couple of drops of water into my black paint. And then what I'll do is when I go to um, load my brush, I take my brush and I spin it on the side of my palette, which allows me to have a nice pointy brush. And because there's a lot of fluid in my paint, it will hold fluid in my bristles, which will allow me to get a nice long brush stroke. So my shadows are gonna be on the opposite side of the light source. So my light source is over here. If I'm working on this frame right here, I have shadows underneath each one of these window frames, I guess this one could be up in the top, but I'm gonna put them underneath and then to the left of each wood piece. So I'm gonna start by just doing a black line underneath this wood piece right in through here. And then I will just kind of travel and go underneath each one of them. You could certainly do your, um, your framework of these inside pieces you could have them all connecting or you can do as I'm doing and just kind of um, utilizing each little frame of the window glass as its own piece because this wood could, I guess, in essence be in front of that one, but I'm just gonna be putting my shadows inside the panes of the window. Um, you could do it on the wood itself if you wanted to, but that'll be your call all on your own. So again, I'm just kind of doing the underneath of these pieces of wood with a little bit of black, and then I will do the left side of them as well. I'm just trying to avoid my hand going through any wet paint. <laughs> We're trying to do this so it doesn't uh, make a mess on the canvas. And of course, I uh, am using my hand to brace myself on my canvas as well because I do tend to have a shaky hand. So bracing myself allows me to get a little bit straighter of a line. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the left side of each piece. So, you know, you can certainly, um, one another trick that is easy, makes my life a little easier when doing these lines, but it's tough to do on camera, is you can lay your canvas down flat on a surface, and that will help you also to get a little bit more stable of lines. But for me, my trick is really just kind of having moisture in my paint, keeping my hand as steady as I can going down um, that particular line and keeping my eye on the prize which is the where it's headed to um, typically if i if i can concentrate on that it allows me to really just um, my brush kind of guides itself as opposed to my brain trying to say okay go really steady so some you know that definitely helps me to um get a more fluid line and sometimes going quicker rather than slow allows you to just let your intuition in your hand take over and allows it to give you a little bit straighter or um, more fluid of a line. And of course acrylic paint is very forgiving in the fact that once it's dry you can always paint over it so if you do something and you're like oh that totally wasn't the way that I wanted it to be you just wait for it to dry and paint over it <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do the other side which is going to be on the opposite side of the sun so I'm going to have them on the bottom edge in through here and again just black paint on my small brush going along this bottom's edge like this and I'm gonna do that for all of the pieces of the window pane. I almost just put my brush in my coffee. They're pretty similar in color right now. <laughs> so that was, that was almost not a good mistake for me to make, but um, and worse things have happened, I guess. So I'm just gonna bring my, 
my uh, shadow here underneath these guys. And then again, if it doesn't turn out perfect, don't worry. We're just going for a fun, fun painting here. We don't have to have all of these lines perfect, but again, Oh, trying to keep your hands steady will help you along a little bit of moisture in that paint or a, you're having your bristles kind of on the longer side that will help to hold a good amount of paint or moisture in them as well which helps um, do this and you could always whip out a um, a paint marker too and <laughs> those those will give you some beautifully clean lines so there's there's some tricks of the trade that you could certainly um, adapt if you have that type of personality that really wants your um, paint strokes to be perfect. I came to the conclusion a long time ago that that wasn't necessary for my painterly eye to be happy, but you might you might want yours to be perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the right side of these um, of these frame pieces for the shadow, trying again not to um, get my hand in the wet black paint from the section below, but we might we might run into it at some point, but hopefully we can avoid avoid most of it. And then once we've got this step done, we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. But I just got a couple more to go here. And of course, once you've got them on here, you can sit and fiddle and clean them up all you need to. But you know, know that it's really, you know, this is about the the enjoyment of the process. It does not have to be perfect. We're just going for a nice crisp autumn style landscape painting with, that has a little bit of dimension to it. So if you can get some some shadow to emerge, great. If and if it's not totally straight, we'll just blame it on an old rickety windowsill. And then we're gonna go ahead and um, move on to the next step with this same brush. So once you've got your shadows on, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding the highlights to our window frame. So I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna be using just white paint and you'll probably be able to guess it's gonna go on the other side of what you had the black on. So we had the black on the left here, we're gonna put the white on the right. You could certainly use a little bit of water in your white paint, but that will tend to dilute the white, which means it will become see-through. So if you do choose to use a more fluid white paint, you might end up doing a couple of layers. So just know that that's, um, that's out there for you. And when I do it, I'm going to attempt to get it on the outside of my wood frame a little bit, but if you go right on top of the, the wood itself, you might end up narrowing or making that piece of frame look too skinny. So you'll have to determine if you want that um, to be wider or skinnier. I'm, I think I'm gonna go for my white line on the outside of it. So it almost makes it look a little bit wider. And I will end up having to probably reload my brush more frequently than I did with my black simply because um, if I, I'm not using water in it, I'm just using my white paint um, so it won't be as translucent, which means I will probably have to pick up paint more frequently because there's not as much moisture in it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the top side of these little pieces in through here. And again, you might end up wanting to do multiple layers. You might end up wanting, you could even add a little bit of yellow or a different color. Let's say you wanted to customize this. You could certainly utilize any color to, you know, maybe you wanted blue window, you know, frames. You can certainly have fun with that. That's gonna be a customizing step on your part if you want to. If you wanted it to look like there's a little bit more sunshine, you could certainly add a touch of yellow or a different color wood, whatever you want to, to make this into your own painting. That's always the fun about painting is you get to you get to make it your own. There's no there's no there are no real rules when it comes to just art making. You make whatever makes you happy and just and just live with that because that's that to me is the part of baking art that is the most joyful. And then I just have this um, side over here. Oh, I got the top one to do too. I forgot about the top one. 
the top of the windowsill up here. Ooh, and that was a little crooked. That's all right. We can go with crooked, no, wor no worries here. And again, if you're going about this and you're like, oh, my lines are not perfect, you can certainly just, you know, customize them or do a second layer once you've got um, the first layer on. And I, you know, with this white paint, because again, I'm not using it with a liquid medium, it is a little bit more difficult to make my lines as fluid as I want and just let the let it go with my with my brush stroke because I I can't have I don't have that continual line um it kind of stops short which kind of prevents me from making it as clean as I would want to on that first pass but that's one of those things that either you're okay with it or you just come back and hit it with a second pass and make it um straighter if you wanted to or or modify it at all and it does again take a little bit longer when you're not using the the fluidity or the medium in your in your brush because you have to reload your brush more frequently and then I'm going to go ahead and do the right hand side so um, this is going to be the top and you can do it really in any order that you want um, whatever kind of is easiest for your brain to di to dissect and kind of follow along with. That one was a nice long line. I didn't expect to be able to go that far, but you know, sometimes sometimes the brush lets you do it, sometimes it doesn't. So I just kind of let my brush tell me what it's going to want to do. <laughs> and again, this is one of those times that if you had um, longer bristles, you might be able to go a little bit farther with your stroke. Uh, if your uh, paint is a little bit more fluid, you can certainly go farther, but with white paint, the more fluid it is, usually it'll be more translucent, which will mean you'll need more layers on it, which is not a bad thing. That was a little crooked, but we can deal with that as well. We'll just, we'll just blame it on the paint job. Whoever painted this window just, you know, made it all crooked in, in actuality, not on the canvas itself. And then I'm almost done here. I just got to do these last couple ones and then we're going to um, use this brush for the next step. And again, just make sure that as you're going through this process that it's as fun and as free flowing as you want it to be or as tight as your personality is dictating that it needs to be. It, it, this is your painting. So when you're going through this process, don't feel like it has to be exactly as mine. Don't feel like it has to... Um, you know, have e each one of these lines exactly the same size. Just kind of let it happen. And, you know, this is a beautiful fall scene. So it's more about the the crispness and the colors that the trees are bringing into it as opposed to how perfectly you've executed some of these lines. So don't don't hold the hold the weight of needing to be perfect with these lines. And if you do need to be perfect, then maybe you're the person who wants to whip out the ruler <laughs> on this step. But that's always an option, too. You can go rulers, you can go pencils, you can do whatever you need to make it perfect um, to, make you, to make yourself satisfied. And then we'll use this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint ourselves some handles on the windows. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are brown, black, and white. And you could really have any style handles that you want. You can have like round knobs or you can have, I'm doing these like curved ones. You could certainly model it after a doorknob in your house if you'd like to, whatever, whatever works for you. So I'm going to start with brown and a little bit of white on my brush. Not a lot. So brown and just a little bit of white on my brush. I'm going to have my handle start about halfway up this window pane. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a curved kind of line, something like that. It can go past your um, the window sill or the, the frame of it a little bit, but you don't want to go too, too far. And then I'll do the same thing over on this side. So about halfway between here and here. And then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a curve like that. So they look kind of similar to one another. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a tiny bit of black paint, give myself a little bit of a shadow underneath or to the left of the handle part 
right in through here so maybe it curves down that bottom a little bit or behind that little left side do the same thing on the right side but only this time I'll put my shadow on the right so just kind of curve it under a little bit under that part that meets the door or the window and then I'll do the same thing over here giving myself a little bit of a curve then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a highlight with white paint so I'm just picking up white paint on my brush and I'm going to give a little quick swipe for a highlight on the top part in, in a curved manner so it gives the viewer the uh, information that this is in fact a curved object so a little bit of white and then just give it a quick swipe down there and then we're going to utilize our large brush for the next step so once you've got your handles done you can make any modifications that you want put your small brush away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the glare on the window panes so i'm going to be using my large bristle brush i'm going to be using white and water and how i'm going to do this is i'm going to be using a very translucent fluid white paint to add almost like a fogginess on the window pane you don't have to do it on the whole thing you could even do some having a little bit of a brighter spot than others um, the idea here is to just get this to look like some sort of glass that we're seeing through um, and it might have a little bit of a shine on it or something from a light within the within the room or something along that line if we were to leave it the way that it is now it would look like there's no glass within this window and it would you know it looked like there's no glass <laughs> so we're going to try and give it a little bit of a glass look so how i'm going to do this i am going to dip my brush in my dirty water and then tap it on my paper towel i'm going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of white paint just ever so tiny bit on my edge of my brush if you're nervous you can dip it back in your water like this and then tap it on your paper towel the trick is you want only want a teeny tiny bit and you want it to be very fluid so once i have it on there what, what i'm going to do is you might be able to do a couple of the panes at once but you want to be able to keep moving this paint until it's um, like of a foggy look and it is um it doesn't have to cover the whole window pane so here we go i have a little bit of watered down white paint on my brush and i am rubbing it more in the center of that window and like this and you can always add more but it's tough to take it away once you've got it on there so as you're doing this if you have a little bit on your paper towel you can always use that but that wasn't enough so i've got to reload my brush because i'm totally out so i repeated that picking up a little bit of white. I think I need a little bit more so we can see it. There we go. And I always err on the side of caution. I can always add more, but it's tough to take it away once it's on there. You can't, you know, once you've covered up all that painting underneath, you can't, you know, repaint it in a in a easy way. So I just kind of go slow when it comes to doing something like this. So I can just kind of keep adding as I want to and not letting it get too out of control on me because I want to still be able to see that background underneath. So I'm really just kind of adding this bit of lightness to my window pane itself. And I just kind of keep, I'm not pressing hard right now. I just kind of keep maneuvering it around. I think I need a little bit more so you can see it as it dries because we are using, because I'm using water in my equation, as it dries, it will become less evident because the water makes it look whiter when it's wet. So I know that. So as I'm doing this, I know that there may be times when I, I, you know, wait for it to dry and then just add a little bit more into it. So you can see I kind of keep going back and forth from one window pane to the next as they're drying so I can just get them to be as bright as I want them to. If you want it a little bit extra, just pick up a touch more white on your brush and you can have like maybe one corner is a little bit lighter than the other. The Another trick is to not overwork it. 
So if you're working this and all of a sudden you get what is looks to be like a bald spot in your paint, that means that you've worked it a little bit too much and you're starting to pull that paint right off of the canvas. So what I would do in that case scenario is wet it a little bit more and spread it out evenly and then go away from it for a little while, let it dry, and then you can come back and put additional um, layer on top of it. But I'm thinking this side's pretty good, so I'm gonna move on to my other side, maybe maybe a little bit more up and through here. I liked, I liked that brightness that I brought into that one, so I'm gonna bring a little bit into this one as if it's catching a little bit more, I don't know, glare from the sun or something, or a light within the the room so something like that works i'm going to go ahead and do the same on the other side so again dipping my brush in my dirty water tapping it on my paper towel picking up a teeny tiny bit of white paint tapping it on my paper towel and going to go in on this side so i think i'll i think i'm going to start up in through here there we go a little bit in through here you can go diagonal you can go crisscross you can really kind of um Put, do really whatever kind of scrubbing type of brush stroke works well for you. Um, and again, each window pane doesn't have to look exactly like the other one because they could be at a different angle. They could be catching the light from something else. So you feel free to make each one, you know, as, as you know, translucent or non-translucent as you want. But again, I'm just adding this little bit of what I'm calling a fog or a glare onto these window panes so they look a little bit more natural. And if you want, you know, want it to really stick out, you can certainly add a bit more of a bright spot here or there. That's gonna, that's gonna give the viewer the information that it is, you know, sh something's shining on it. You know, it could be a light from somewhere else. It could be, you know, the, the light from the sun is coming through. So have fun with this. And then we have one tiny little step left to go. So after you've got this done, we're gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So you can just get that out, get ready, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm using black paint. I'm gonna sign mine in the bottom left, right in this little window pane here. I'm signing mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful seasonal image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.